the CBS Radio Mystery Theater. Present. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Backward, turn backward, old time in thy flight. Make me a child again, just for tonight. Yes, time, could we but call it back. But father time, or to be true to the spirit of equal rights, mother time, moves inexorably along his or her everlasting way, deaf to all our entreaties, unmoved by any consideration for our special condition. So, you presidents, dictators, millionaires, all you men of importance and might, for all your wealth and power, has any of you ever been able to buy back even a single second of eternity? Well? He's going to kill me. But he's my best friend. He's going to kill me. Well, he doesn't even know you. He's going to kill me. But he's a nice, sweet, happy fellow. That doesn't mean he's not going to kill me. Our mystery drama, Don't Look Back, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Don Scardino. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What was the song the siren sang? And what were the notes of the lost chord? And what was the sweet music that Orpheus made that gentled the most savage hearts and calmed the wind and the waves of the wildest storms? We shall never know. Or shall we? Perhaps sometimes, somewhere, when we shall least expect it, the notes of a strange melody will suddenly steal into our hearts and possess our souls. A melody that could only have been sung in heaven or in hell. Renfro. Huh? What? How'd you like to wake up, Renfro? <sighs> what for? Well, enjoy the scenery. Yeah. I know this kind of country by heart. Nothing but scrubby pine and rattlesnakes. How about copperheads? I don't say you wouldn't meet up with one or two. But talking about snakes. Now, I uh, must we... You know the little mother you really want to watch out for? Now, uh, spare me, Renfro. The coral snake. Never heard of it. Now, whereas your average copperhead, he hates to bite anything he can't eat. And your ordinary rattlesnake, <laughs> well, he's scared stiff of you. Uh, how do we get off on the subject of these colubrine vipers, anyhow? Why don't we change the subject, huh? Now you're talking, Arthur. You know how I like to think happy thoughts the afternoon before a concert. Oh, here's a happy thought. We're out of gas. We're out of gas? Well, let's say we're almost out of gas. Oh, great manager you are. I'm the best manager you ever had. But well, you can't even manage to keep the gas tank full. I'll tell you what I can manage, though. I can manage to keep you from walking behind that plow and staring at the rear end of a mule. Now, that ain't true. Pappy always did have a tractor. Ah, I bet you even wore shoes. To church? What? We was folks back where I come from. Oh, look. Your lucky day just up ahead of the service station. Yep. Sure enough. <sighs> now what, Renfro? <laughs> right out here, in the middle of the swamp, a little general store with a gas pump. Why, I used to work in a place like this in the wintertime. Waiting for the spring planting. You see that young fella coming over? You can't hardly make out his face for all the grease and grime. That used to be me. It'd still be you if it weren't for me. Well, I made you rich, too, didn't I? I'll fill it up. All right. What? Why, it's a gal. You want me to look under the hood? Why? What do you expect to find there? An engine. <laughs> now, I guess she told you. There, beyond the shadow of a doubt, is the ugliest girl I have ever seen. Well, I wouldn't say she's all that ugly. Well, no. 
Well, how ugly would you say she was? Well, she ain't ugly at all. She's just, she's just homely. Hey, say, Artie, you think she recognized me? Oil down, half a quart. That's thirteen dollars for the gas. Paid, little lady, Arthur. And will there be anything else, Mister Pitter? Then you did recognize me. Renfro Pitter is a household word. You hear that, Arthur? Of course, it's not the same word in every household. <laughs> Honey, how'd you like a special autographed picture of me? Why? Why? Yes, why would I need it? What are you to me? Why, he's the personification of your unconscious libido. Is this Yankee a friend of yours or just someone you gave a lift to? Now, listen, Dory. How do you know my name? Well, it's written there on your pocket. <laughs> I didn't think you could read. You probably can't. The Yankee must have tipped you off. I'm having a concert tonight in Central City. I heard. Well, then you must have also heard it sold out. Tickets cannot be had for love nor money. Now, wouldn't you like to go? Why would I like to go? There'll be a ticket waiting for you at the box office. There'll be an envelope marked, the uh, little old gas station gal. Hey, you know something, Renfro? Hey, we have another hit number there. Little old gas station gal. I'll get Ruby on her right away. I'll see you at the concert tonight, Dory, honey. I don't think so. You mean, well, you got something better to do? Mm. Like what? Oh, like walking the dog. Who's that little old gal? You don't fool me. She doesn't. No, sirree, not for a minute. That little old gal is just crazy about me. She is. She has to be. Why do you say that? Because they can't, none of them, fight against you. She'll be there tonight. You're sure about that? You bet. And she'll have her little suitcase all packed. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is your fantasy, Renfro. Carry on. And she'll say, Renfro, take me. I'm yours. And you will say, well, I'll just point to all them thousands of little old gals out in the audience and I'll say, honey... You just have to wait your turn. All this is provided she shows up. Well, she'll show up. You positive? They always do, don't they? Well, it's just our old time again. She out there? It's who out there? Well, now, who do you think? Oh, it's a gas jockey? Mm-hmm. I left her a seat in the front row. No, I didn't see her. I know she'll show up. Is that what you should be worrying about now? It's the only thing I ever worry about. Now, look, don't rush through the first number. Does this uh, phone connect out to the box office? Why don't you let me worry about the box office? Yep, that's what this button says. I, I, you haven't put on your tie. Uh, what's the little fella's name in the box office? Dexter. You, you can't go on without a tie. Hello? That you, Dexter? Mm-hmm. This is Renfro Tibbet. Uh, I left the ticket there for a little old gal in an envelope. That's right. Still there. Oh. Well, no, Dexter, no. She'll show up. You just hold on to it. Much obliged, Dexter. Well, there's, there's lots of traffic coming into town this evening. Yeah, put on your tie. My tie? How will you be able to take it off and throw it out into the audience if you're not wearing it in the first place? Now, what can be keeping that little old girl? <laughs> what do you think? Her common sense. She didn't show up. You just laid the prize-winning egg of all time. I just kept looking there at that empty seat. You died out there, Renfro. That ain't true. Why? You mean you didn't feel it? You heard the applause. The applause was for your name, not for you. Why do you suppose she didn't show up? Why don't you stop worrying about her and worry about you? What have I got to worry about? Because a year, two years from now, when you're back on the farm and behind the plow, you'll ask yourself, how did it happen? And where did it begin? Where did what begin? Your downfall. What are you talking about, Arthur? It started here, tonight. You took this audience for granted. And once you begin doing that, they know it. And they don't like it. No, I just happen to be having a bad night, that's all. Now, Arthur, 
You know everything. Why do you suppose she ain't here? Renfro, you're not here either. The real, genuine, authentic Renfro Tibbet they paid to see, paid to hear, hasn't shown up yet. Now you go out there for the second half and give those people their money's worth. Hi there. Well, what do you want? Well, the sign on the window says General Store, don't it? I know, but what do you want? I left a ticket for you. Oh, did you? I said I would, didn't I? And I said I wouldn't want to go. What have you got against me? Nothing. That ain't true. All right. Everything. Everything. Like what? I despise everything you stand for. Well, I'm not sure as how I stand for anything. Oh, yes, you do. The cheap and the common and the vulgar. Yeah, but, but aside from that, I'm, I'm really a very nice fellow once you get to know me. You look at all women as if their stupid little hands just fall all over themselves just to look from you. Honey, if you got it, you got it. And the way you looked at me this afternoon. Let's give this homely little girl a great big thrill. Uh, I never said you was homely. What did you expect me to do? Faint at the sight of you? It's been known to happen. Look, I- I'm really a very nice fella when you get to know me. But I don't want to get to know you. Would you leave, Mr. Tibbet? Why didn't you come to the concert? Because... Because I... Because why? I... I can't tell you. I... You've got to tell me. No, you think I'm crazy. I won't. I, I promise I won't. Now, now, why didn't you come to the concert? He's going to kill me. What? Who's going to kill you? Who? The fella. Which fella? The fella that was in the car there. With you. Wait a minute. Who was in the car with Renfro Tibbet? Why, Arthur. Arthur Guggenheimer. Renfro's best friend and manager. Arthur. Smart, sophisticated. Arthur, he would kill Doreen? He's going to kill Doreen? Murder? Well, we have had murder on this show before, you know. It could happen again. It could even happen in Act Two. On a moonless night, on a deserted moor, with the howling of a blustering wind, or perhaps of some wild animals, to chill both body and soul at such a time, and in such a place, well may there be a feeling of foreboding, but in broad daylight, in warm and familiar surroundings, why should there be a sudden feeling of dread, an intimation of disaster, an aura of death, and all without warning, or even cause. Who's going to kill you? That fella. Which fella? That fella that was in the car there with you. Arthur? Well, you're crazy. I knew you'd say that. He couldn't kill anybody. Then why do I have this feeling that he's going to kill me? Why do you have this feeling? I don't know. Dory, honey, there's just got to be a reason. Does that? Well, otherwise it just don't make sense. Hmm. Especially for me. I am the most practical-minded person in the world. I've had to be. My dad ran away from home. My mother got sick. I had to run this place all by myself to support us. I never had a chance to enjoy silly notions like other kids. Maybe you never had a chance to be a kid, neither. This is a spooky thing. I'm scared of it. you got a right to be scared of spooky things, honey. No, I don't. No one does, because there's no spooky things in the world of reality. Then, Dory, honey, well, how do you explain the spooky thing that happened to you just tonight? Maybe it was a sudden flash of insight. Come again? Well, oh, I'd better not tell you. You think I'm crazy. Oh, tell me. He'll kill me because... I could become a threat to him. Now, Dory, how 
How could you ever become a thing like that? Maybe I would change you in some way. What way? Maybe you'll fall in love with me. Love? Now, wait, who said anything about love? I... I'm in love with you, Renfro. You sure enough didn't show no sign of it. But I love you. Well, how... How could you fall in love with me? How do they all fall in love with you, Renfro? They see your picture. Your eyes. Your smile. They seem to be looking at you. Just you. And your voice seems to whisper just to you. Oh, honey. You don't want to take it serious. I know. I just thought... Oh, I know what you thought. Well, don't you ever want to get a little fun out of life? It wouldn't be fun for us. Well, that's where you're so wrong. We, we travel all over the world. We live high on the hog. I know. You don't know, Dory. You're just a little old farm gal from some piney swamp. You don't know what the rest of the world is like. I didn't know neither. I had no idea how people could live and eat and dress and enjoy. Yeah, we could do all those things, and then in a couple of weeks or, or months of... Even a year, maybe. It would all be over. Why, Dory, honey, what makes you think... Don't, don't, don't lie to me. Not now, when we're talking so close to the heart. If only I could be sure it would be over in a couple of weeks or months, I'd go with you. I would lock that front door and go with you tonight. Dory, what are you saying? But it wouldn't be over. Because I keep telling you I would do something to change you. What? I don't know. But it would be the something that Arthur wouldn't like, and and that's why he'd kill me. Dory, it would be over. A fellow like me now, I, I just can't be faithful to one girl. Well, not for too long, anyhow. You better go now. Why? I don't want to die, Renfro. I know what's going to happen. I've seen the future. Nobody can see the future. Well, maybe no, but I was given a glimpse of go. Dory, please. I love you. Go. You don't believe me. Is that it? No, that's not it. I do believe you. Well, then why are you sending me away? Because, because. Yes? Oh, go. Go. Please. <sighs> All right. No, don't talk, not a word. You are the only one I ever loved. The only one I will ever love. I... I don't care what happens to me. No, you don't talk that way. Only good things are going to happen. You're not like the other girl. Well, I wish I were. I have never been in love before. Well, you mustn't be in love with me. I, I'm just scared, Renfro. I know. You don't know. I know. Because I'm scared, too. Of what? I'm just scared of everything. I guess that's what being in love is. You're scared. You're just plain scared. But what is it for you to be scared about? Scared I'm going to lose you? Oh, you never will. Scared it won't last. As long as we live. And even... After we're dead. Dory, will you marry me? What? But didn't you hear what I said? You, you're asking me to marry you? Yes. But we only just met. Well, that don't really matter, does it? No. If, if you're in love. If you're in love, nothing else matters. And we're in love, Dory. We're in love. Yes. Let, let's get married now. Now? This minute. I, I have to. You have to what? Well, uh, close the store. Well, just shut the door. And, and don't we need things? Like what? We have a license or, or, or someone to marry us. You just sit here, honey. I'll come back with everything. But... Yeah, you haven't gone to change your mind. No, no. no. You just pack some clothes. No, don't do that. We'll buy it all new. Oh, you're crazy. Of course I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm in love, ain't I? Now, don't you move. You just stay here. Where 
your beer. Let's go down to the bar and have a couple of drinks. I can't oblige, Arthur. I'm busy. <laughs> you really pulled it out that second half. I have to hand it to you. The old pro. Hey, uh, where'd you disappear to afterwards? Now, let's see. I can smoke out a justice of the peace, and you'll stand up for me. What's this? I'm getting married. Married? Yes, sir. To Dory. Well, you can't marry Dory. Why not? Your fans. They wouldn't like it. Well, then they can lump it. Oh, you keep talking that way about your adoring public and you'll wind up in back of that plow again. I wouldn't mind if Dory was home cooking my supper. Renfro. Kate, don't you see? You, you, you can't marry a homely girl. Who said she's homely? You did. First minute you laid eyes on her. Well, that was before I got a good look. She looks like any one of your 20 million fans. That's why you can't marry her. Who says I can't marry her? All those girls, they're women who fall asleep listening to your records, holding on to your framed and autographed picture. They'd never forgive you. But I'll forgive them. The average woman figures, okay, let him marry a glamorous, gorgeous movie star, but to marry a mousy, little, plain Jane... I, he could have married me. I love this girl. You're talking to Arthur. Is that the only way you could get her in for all? Marry her? No. But it's the only way I want her. All right. Leave it all to me. Leave what all to you? The arrangements, the details. I'm handling all them myself. Oh, come on. What do you know about anything? This is going to be the biggest wedding in the history of show business. No, it won't. We'll have it on primetime TV. Oh, we'll have it tomorrow morning. This is mine and Dory's wedding, and that's how it's going to be. And you can come along and be the best man or not. All right. Go ahead and throw away a $50 million career, but don't expect me to be a part of it. Where, where are you going? Where do you think? I want to get drunk. <laughs> Yeah. It absolutely sure is me. What do you want? What do I want? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, penetrating question. Uh, what do I want? I know what you want. Well, if you know, why did you have to ask? Please, don't do it. Do what? Kill me. Kill you? Kill you? <laughs> now, why would I want to kill you? Because I'm taking him away from you. Oh, no, no, no. I, I can't help it. No, you don't understand. You're not taking him away from me. He's taking you away from me. What? He saw you first. He asked you first. But it wasn't right. What, what wasn't right? What? Just because he thinks quicker than I do where women are concerned and makes the first move faster. A girl like you, hidden, buried out here in a swamp where nobody knows you, appreciates you, understands. I... You belong with the great women of history. You're drunk. You... Yeah, yeah. With visions. You're the kind that men go mad for. He'll make a man throw away everything he has in this world and the next just to be with you. It's a power. Well, you were born with it. I'll make your fortune. Now, look, I can do it. I took him away from a plow. I can take you from behind a gasoline car. Oh, don't talk like that. I, I, I'm frightened. Well, it's all I mine. It's all mine. But now I... I see those eyes, those great, beautiful eyes. I'll make you into the most marvelous actress in the world. And I can do it. No. Don't say no. I love Renfro. I just want to be with Renfro. Do you think I'd let you throw your life away on that dim-witted apple knocker? Please, please, don't kill me. I won't. You will. Well, why? I know if you don't leave me right now. You're going to kill me. Why does 
she keep saying that? Why is she so positive? Is it a trick, perhaps? Well, let's put it this way. It's not easy, but scattered throughout our story, starting with the very first minute or two, are the answers. So, let's all meet here again for Act Three. Some of the loveliest girls are the ones that, perhaps, other people saw first and married first. Perhaps this is what makes them so especially lovely. And it goes the other way, too. Sometimes the most desirable fellow is the one who belongs to your best friend. This is a sad situation. But if you were to sit around and enumerate all of the sad situations we encounter in this veil of tears, why, you wouldn't have time for anything else, would you? Where do you get this crazy idea out of your head? I'm not going to kill you, Dory. Please, go. I could never kill you. You will. You will. How could I kill you? I love you. No. I'm the right guy, the logical Let's guy go, for I'll you. Me. I'll never let go let of you. Let go. Let go. <laughs> Dory. Dory. Come back. Dory. Please, please come back, will you? I, I, I promise I won't touch you. Dory. Uh, I don't know what came over me, what possessed me, but uh, well, I went crazy, but it's all gone now. Dory! <laughs> Dory! I'm going to die! I'm dying! Dory! There's a storm! Shotgun! Get him! Get him! Get him! Uh, Dory, Dory, what happened to you? It's too late. He's gone. He bit me. <laughs> I'll get you to a hospital. It was a coral snake. Oh. oh. Red, dark, yellow. I'll get you into the car, you huh? You could see the colors glowing in the moonlight. Yeah, I just hold on. I told you. You'd kill me. No, no. You'll live. You'll be all right. You've got to be all right. <laughs> Listen, Renfro. No. No more listening. You you, you wouldn't shoot me. What do you think I bought this gun for? Renfro, I... Before I shoot you, Arthur. Because I've got to shoot you. Just tell me. Tell me why you did kill Dory. I didn't kill her. I didn't. You killed her, Arthur. Oh, yeah. The snake did bite her. True enough. But you drove her out into that field. Because of you, she's dead. Dead. And what do you say to that? Oh, uh, I, uh... Yeah? Uh, Go ahead. Tell me. You always know everything. You always got all the answers. Renfro, maybe... Maybe what? You're stalling for time. Well, since you really got nothing to say, I'm gonna... But I got so much to say to her. If I only could tell her how sorry I am. In one second, you'll get your chance. You're going to meet her in heaven, and you can tell her. But I'm not going to heaven. I'm going to hell. Well, you should have thought of that before. You'll be way down there. Yeah. That's right, Renfro. I'm going to go way down there. Renfro. Listen. Maybe we can get her back. We can what? Yeah. Yeah. You can get her back. Get who back? Who have we been talking about? Dory. Dory? But she's dead. But is she dead the way the average person is dead? Being dead the same for everybody. No, 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 no. No, it isn't. Not for you and me. You know why? Because we're gods. Gods? You're crazy. No, I'm serious, Renfro. Who are we? What are we, you and I? Look at yourself. An illiterate hayseed, but aren't you practically worshipped by millions? Yeah, that's the word to describe it, worshipped. And me? Ordinary guy from Baltimore. What do I know? How to add and subtract and pick a hit tune. 
Millions of guys look up to me, envy me. Oh, how they dream of my money, my cars, my good times. What's this got to do? Who do you think the ancient gods were? Swingers, like us. Orpheus, just a musician like you who traveled all over. I thought you were going to talk some shit. I am, because you reminded me. When you said, I'm going way down there, you reminded me of Orpheus, Eurydice, and Aristeus. That's you, me, and Dory. And it's happened again. What's happened again? Well, I just told you. Orpheus, Eurydice, and Aristeus. What are you talking about? Hey, now, come on. Even you heard of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus, the god of music. That's you. Falls in love with Eurydice. That story. I never heard of nothing. And on that wedding day, Aristeus, the god of common sense and industry. <laughs> I guess that's me. Well, he tries to make love to her. She's scared, so she runs away from him and gets bitten by a snake. No. Yes. She gets bit by a snake? And dies. So, here we are again. Again? Orpheus, Eurydice, and Aristeus. I don't believe it. Believe it. It's the only way you can get her back. How can I get her back? The way he did. Who? Who are we talking about? Orpheus. He went after her. Where? To the land of the dead. Well, how could he get there? Because he was a god. And he could talk to the god of the underworld, one god to another. And so Pluto... Who's he? The god of the underworld. And his wife, Persephone... They gave her back to him. Eurydice to Orpheus. Therefore, Dory to you. Why, therefore? Because this has happened before to the three of us in ancient Greece. We were Orpheus, Eurydice, and Aristeus. You can't be serious. No. Now listen to me. Have I ever lied to you? No. Steered you wrong? No. Okay. Just put down the gun, Renfro. That's it. You don't want an accident, do you? Now, remember, this has happened to us before. To Orpheus, Eurydice, and Aristeus. And it'll keep happening till you do it right. Till I do what right? Till you stop looking back. At the last minute, why do you always look back? What are you saying? This time... Don't look back. This time, do it right. And you'll never have to do it again. Go now. To the kingdom of the dead. How do I get there? You don't get there. It comes to you. You... You wish for it. And you'll be there. In the ancient kingdom of the dead. But the, the gods... Those ancient Greek gods... I don't speak the language. We all talk the same language. Pluto, the king of the underworld, what do you think he looks like? A king? Uh, I guess like the president of a record company. <laughs> or one of the network clients. You just picture him in your mind now. And his wife, the queen, Persephone. Picture and wish. And this time, when you get it, do it right. Don't look back. Wish. Wish. Ah, uh, wish. I wish to go to Dory. I wish. <laughs> Yes, sir. Persephone, it's Renfro. Why, Pluto, honey, it surely is. How'd you get here, Renfro? I didn't hear you die. I, I come here to see you, King Pluto. Hi, ah, sir, I'm happy to see you. I was always a fan of yours, but I could wait waited. He don't look dead, Blue. No, I expect he don't. Now, uh, 
What are you doing here, Enzo? Well, I come here for my sweetheart, Doris. Uh, D- Doris? Little gal died of snake bite. I believe it was last night. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. But what's done is done. <laughs> well, you just got to let me take her back. Oh, that's against the rules. You're a god and I'm a god. The rules wasn't made for us. The rules was especially made for us. And the rules may never be broke. But you broke them once before. Never? Oh, yes, you did. For Orpheus and Eurydice. Oh, well, uh... Renfro, I can't give it to you. But I ain't asking you to give it to me. You ain't. Well, then, what in the world? Well, just lend it to me. She'll be yours again, won't she? Oh, well... Oh, come uh... on, Sue. You got nothing to lose. Okay, okay. Now, don't make me the heavy. Go ahead, take it. Uh, on one condition. First caller. Go ahead. Dory? Dory? Where is she? She's standing right behind you. Yeah, no, no. Don't turn to look. That's the condition. Don't turn to look until you're out of my kingdom. But why? Because she's only a shadow. She won't be real till you get her back into the real world. Now, start to walk. Walk back to that world. And this time, do it right. Don't turn back to look. Because if you do, you've got to stay here forever. You understand? Yes, sir. Goodbye. Or yes, ran trouble. And this time, do it right. Do not look back. Dory, you're coming back with me. Back up there where we both belong. Back up there with the green grass and the gold sunlight. See how it's getting lighter? The darkness is disappearing. Dory, talk to me. I, I know I'm not supposed to look at you, but but I can talk to you, and, and you can talk to me. They didn't say nothing about not talking. Dory, are you there? Wait. Is it a joke? Are they joking with me? Playing me for the fool? Dory? If you're there, answer me. Answer. It's a gag. They pulled a fast one. Well, I'm going to go back there and... No. No. No, Pam. Dory, it's you. No. It is you. No, no. Dory, what's happening to you? Where are you going? Dory. Come back. Goodbye. Renfro, my darling. Goodbye. Forever. Dory. 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 Huh? What? Huh? What? What's that? Oh. Renfro? Yeah. Yes, Renfro. Look, uh, Renfro, I figured I'd better hide the revolver and lay low for a bit until you forgive me. Will you forgive me, Renfro? Can you forgive me? Forgive you? As far as we know, Orpheus did forgive Aristeus. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, By any chance... Were you there? Down there? Yep. Yep. I was there. Oh. Well, uh, how, uh, how did it go? Not so good. You mean, you looked back, huh? Yep. I did. I looked back. 
again. Never look back. What is there to see, asks the poet. But the past. And the past is the property of the dead. Of course, after all, what can be changed in what has gone before? It is the present that is molded by the living. The present and the future. I shall return shortly. Orpheus, why did he turn back to look? And at the very last moment, too. Why? The ancient poets who tell the story don't know. Perhaps it's because psychiatry had not yet been formally invented. Today, we could probably do entire clinical volumes on the subject. Maybe he didn't really want her to come back. Maybe he had an unhappy childhood. Maybe Orpheus and Aristeus may have had too deep a friendship. Who knows? Our cast included Don Scardino, Marion Seldes, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Where are you going? Just to get the sealing wax to seal up the package oh, again. Oh, fool. Mr. Home will be taken in by that. Leave it broken. As long as the money is found in the bag, the package could have come apart accidentally. Hand me two more bundles of letters. Bones, and mess them up. Yes. Yes. Could have happened inside the bag. Now, give me something real heavy. Yes, that weight there on the table. The big brass one. The, the, the two-pounder? Yes, I'm going to wrap that up in lots of paper. I'm going to address it to myself. And I, I just glue all these stamps I brought onto it. And into the bag it goes. Now, that thing could have been bounced around in there and done all the damage. While I'm doing this, would you please go out and tell Charlie to come in here? And then you make yourself scared. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.